Stefan. What up, what up, what up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tuner Status, the podcast. We have another special guest here. I have my guy. My name's Eric Duty, but also used to be Eric, Eric Cameron. Cameron. Ready, set, toast, the whole nine. Mm. Yeah, man. So long, long, long time friend. It's very dope to have him come up here. Um, it's different. Not to say that a lot of guests weren't friends, but when you have personal people that you've chilled with, one-on-one, it's pretty much like family when you get these guys up here. So um, let's start, you know, talk about everything. I mean, the car culture, the photography. Um, what did you roll into first? Dude, uh, I think it'd be, I think it's good to say thanks for having me. Like, I agree. It does feel like I'm <laughs> stepping back into like a family friend setting. Yeah. <laughs> as like, it's been, it's been a hot minute. But uh, to get into the question, definitely... For me, before I even met you, mm-hmm. I was like car audio, and I would just go out to these shows that I would find on Facebook called Tuner Status. Yeah, and uh, they were held at a parking lot in Lynn, and uh, a store named Mass Vapors, mm-hmm. and I would show up with this Honda Element, which is like a toaster-looking oh type vehicle, <laughs> and I would show up, and like everyone had their like. Their cars were all like modified and like they were like, you know, like four like tuner settings or like American Muscle, you know, whatever, or German. And I was just this guy in the SUV that would show up (laughs) with one big subwoofer in the back and people would come over and like I liked the attention. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to be super transparent because I've like reflected on everything. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I liked the attention. So I came back and did it again. And then I liked the intention and I felt like I had, they started calling me toast. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I started like introducing myself to you, all the guys. Yeah. And this is when you had the 04 WRX. Mm-hmm. Was it an SCI? Yes. It was an 04 SCI. And um, we started becoming cool. And then, uh, I don't know, man, this shout out Chris Bertuccio, but uh, I watched a 2015 H2I video with my friend Nick Wall. Oh, you remember Nick? Shit, of course, yeah. And uh, shout out to the OG Nick, and shout out to Chris as well. And uh, dude, I remember where I was. Mm-hmm. It was one of those where you were moments when it happened type thing. Yeah. And uh, I was watching his H two O I video. I think it was 2015, and it made me feel something mm-hmm. that I don't think I've ever felt before. And it was just a moment where I was like, "I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that." Yeah. Yeah, and that was my motivation. I didn't care to make a production like that. I mm-hmm. wanted to make something that made someone else feel like that. Yeah. Make them want to get up and go do that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the next day, me and Nick bought a slider rail, and uh, I got a, I think it was a Canon Rebel T5. Oh my God, everybody, the starter pack camera. And yeah. uh, dude, I rolled up to the next tuner status meet. Yeah. And I was snapping photos, dude. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of like how it all started. And then the, I toast, I just came up with Ready, Set, Toast, dude, and it became a brand. It's been that since. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind So have you ever gone back and revisited those photos and seen the, the progress? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 It was, uh, have you tried touching up the photos? No. No? <laughs> no, dude. I've done that. I've done that. I went back and tried to retouch photos, and I'm like, it's, this is bad. Bro, I was like, if I'm looking back at it, bro, like yeah. I made friends with some people that had some super sick cars. Like, yeah. I say that because if you're doing like car photography, mm-hmm. half of the oh shit factor of the photo is the fucking build. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it is, it is. I'm cool to swear in here, right? Yeah, no, you're good. You're cool, good. Cool, you're good. cool. So, uh, so like I had friends like Stephen Kim, like Mina Awad, and mm-hmm. uh, like you, mm-hmm. and we would go to the parking lot. 50 feet to the fucking left yeah and we would shoot dude and i'm reflecting on these photos like maybe like three years ago i did this mm-hmm. dude and i saw like my filters my radial filters yeah. do not touched up it's just super obvious that oh i dragged and dropped god and, like, yeah it took just the cars exposed and just a little bit of around it dude it made me want to throw up yeah but, like, but back then it was because he was hungry back then so it's like whatever we thought in our mind we wanted it to look so it's like as, as bad as the photo i look i feel i felt like that was the purest 
that I will ever get to photography because I was so just like uneducated, but just like everything I wanted was like raw. I was like, okay, I want to highlight these wheels. I want to highlight this. I want to highlight that. I want to. And yeah, it would look super over edited, but I was like, damn, this is like what I wanted. Back you didn't know day. how to do it, so you yeah. tried. Mm -hmm. That's like what it was, dude. Like imagine like not having like those friends or like those people that were down in the scene, mm -hmm. and like you had like these beat up fucking like no, not not to shame anyone, dude, but like beat up fucking rust buckets. Yeah. And like like shout out you if you're doing it for fun, but like rust buckets that like you don't really want to take photos of but mm -hmm. like that's kind of all you could get dude we had like pretty cool builds around us for our disposable practice like yeah. you too yeah because you built tuner status yeah. and then you got you got back into photography and you had all these people that yeah, were I know. down dude that was like one of the biggest like things that allowed me to excel so fast mm. is because i knew so many people mm -hmm. that was just like yeah i'll come out yeah. And I was like, damn. Like, I thought they would say, no, you didn't take enough photos. What photos did you take? Send me a couple of your pictures. Let me see your portfolio. Yeah. Nah, they were just like, yeah, how come out? love. Yeah, so that was love dope. That. So what was, so you had the element. What was next after the element? Dude, um, what was the process? Like, dude, I, the element, dude, I mean, like, I've always wanted a Subaru. Yeah. I wanted an STI. Mm -hmm. Seeing yours was like, a big fucking like, yeah. Yeah. I'm game. Yeah. Like I'm game, and like, I wanted a blah by for the longest time, dude. Yeah, I love them, bro. Right. You don't even see them now. No. No, you barely see Hawkeyes either. Yeah. Like, and they were still, they were everywhere at one point, but you like now a blah by, and that's my favorite. And like, I was a big when I had the blah by, I was so just oh I love Hawkeyes, I love Hawkeyes, but now I'm just like all like solely like blah by now, and I've thought about it, but like the ones that are on the market right now. Just, beat. Yeah, I know. Beat. I know. And 20K. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I know. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. So you ended up in a Subaru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I had the Element, man. And then, uh, you know, I remember in high school, again, with Nick Wall, mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out the car I wanted. And I, I wanted a Hawkeye. I decided in high school I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want that. Mm -hmm. And so, like, doing these shoots, you know, I was saving up and I'm not going to cookie cut it, dude. The shoots did not get me to getting that car. Yeah. But like I, cause I, but I worked for it. I put my, I put money aside and shout out my mom for letting me, uh, you know, co-sign on my first car and yeah. she helped me get the car and it was a Hawkeye. It was mm -hmm. a 20, 2007, uh, CBWRX and it was a Hawkeye and I got it off this dude named Nate and, uh, <laughs> didn't know this. Mm -hmm. It was a bit, uh, I figured, okay, it might be easier if I go into this. I brought it to your show. Yeah. And I told all the people that I thought were cool that I got this car. Mm -hmm. And then they said, you get that off of Nate? And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I, was like, fuck. I was like, yeah, and he was like, they gave me that like dude that like all white dudes do when they don't want to say something. <laughs> oh shit. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah. oh no, it turned out the thing had a huge turbo on it. Like thing was pushing like 400, 500 horsepower on like the stock tranny. And uh, you know, it was bone stock. I couldn't tell when yeah. I got it. So like shout out Nate, but like, yeah. and surprising enough throughout the five years I had it, never gave me an engine problem. Minus all the overheating that I had that you helped me with. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I ended up in that Subaru, man. And uh, you know, it was a very slow climb with that car. Yeah. But I got it to where I wanted to be eventually. So I remember, like, you know, the phases that it went through, uh, <laughs> the wraps, the colors. You know, the most notable, um, too, was when you had the green, and then when you transitioned to that red, that red was nasty, bro. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And then, like most of us, you know, when we get that first set of three-piece wheels, I remember the excitement when you ordered those wheels. Gas. And then you told me that the wheels were coming, and I was just like, no way, bro. It was a gas. And then you bro. put the tires on, and then you was just like, yo, the wheels are on the car, the wheels are on the car. And I was just like, yo, that's fucking nuts, bro. Like, that car, it was, it was, yeah, it was Dude, him, that bro. car is the reason why I'm rebuilding credit today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, let's be real, man. I got shit for that car that I could not afford, bro, and I yeah. did not take credit seriously. Yeah. Like, but dude, yeah, I I got it green. I got attacked by turkeys. I, you ever own a black car? You buff it real well. It's a mirror, okay? If you live in the woods like me, there might be animals that might be intimidated by its reflection, and that's why it went green. 
it happened again. Didn't see his reflection. Yeah. And then that's when I ripped it apart. It was like an Oreo. I had uh, Dan's auto body do the flares, pause. Yeah. And, uh, and then we had to do the flares. And then we had to do the flares to keep it simple and respectful. Mm -hmm. And um, my boy Scott helped me with body work, dude. And I got it wrapped in this gorgeous red. And Who did the wrap? Ryan Morrissey at RDM Auto Styling. All right, shout out to Ryan. Shout out to Ryan. That's what's up. Just shout out. Also, dude, I want to fucking point out that I was his like second car he's ever wrapped coming yeah. out of Eastside because mm -hmm. he was at Eastside Motoring, and now he's his business is thriving today. I dude. know it's so dope to see how far he's come. You know, yeah. really successful and, and hello, Ginge. And and it's crazy just to see like because we've all known each other for so long, so now to see like how fast time has gone by and how everybody's kind of just doing their own thing. It's crazy. I like know. Nick with Eccentric, Ryan with RDM, you know. I you love what Nick's doing with Like it's crazy, way. it's crazy, you know. Um, shout out to Nick and the guys from Eccentric. You know, I really wish I could have made it to the event, but between filming the podcast and then I had to dip out of town real quick, like, you know, I wish I could have been there, but I heard it was a great turnout, great turnout. I just love what he's doing, man. He's like taking his time with merch. Yeah. And like he's like actually like, designing merch and like putting some serious effort in it's like really cool to see it's not like a money grab like mm -hmm. a lot of companies nowadays yeah that just show up dude make a fucking tent and fuck it at wicked big me dude mm -hmm. sell what sells and pocket it dude like you have some like sh like eccentric has like i'm not even dude i'm not sponsored bro like but I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna give credit where it's due like i don't have to know what eccentric is and i don't need to know you don't need to know nick mm -hmm. to think that it's cool stuff like yeah i want to wear it because it's sick yeah and like it's cool it's cool to see that local stuff so now you have the car, you're out, and now you're navigating throughout the car scene. I mean, did you start getting into traveling? What was it like for you? Like, did you stay local? And then how did you bridge the photography with your car? Because it's kind of like you were blown up at the same time with the photography and your car getting more recognition on the, yeah. the scene. So, I mean, where did what places did they take you to? Ah. Uh. It's a good question. It's a really good question. I think, uh, I think, dude, like my car, what my car added clout. Yeah. 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 Cause like my photography, like I was kind of like the one of the guys to go to for like photos and stuff, which mm -hmm. was like sick for a while. Couldn't get anyone to pay though. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I want, I was getting hit up and yeah. like that was cool. And to this day, mm -hmm. I still love to do my car photo shoots because it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Um, so that took me to a lot of cool places, like going to Tune Revolution with you and, um, you know, even working, working with doing some jobs with like, uh, Miller with LaShawn. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. But I, honestly, with the car stuff, it didn't take me far. Mm -hmm. Uh, the build for my car was finally brought me to a point where like, I wanted to travel yeah. for it. Like, I just felt like some type of like bar mm -hmm. that I held, held to myself that I don't want to bring my car to Tune Revolution yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to drive my car on the strip at H2O yet. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going to break next, I want to break next and I yeah. don't want to blend in. Mm -hmm. um, also, if anyone wants to color my car, it's the, it's a really weird name and that's why I was so proud of it. It's called Luscious Lips. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Brother, <laughs> when I got that sample in the mail, I was like, no one's going to find this, bro. No one's searching this shit. Oh my god! It's called Luscious Lips. I don't remember the brand, but uh, Jesus. So it took me that far, man. And um, what's the farthest you been? You went to in the car? Was it Maryland, or did you go past that? I don't know. Is was Twin Revolution Philly farther than Maryland? Nah. It's then 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 H two O. H two O. Yeah, H two O. What was it like bringing the car to H two O, bro? What was the drive like? That was a long ass drive, bro. The drive's cool if you go with the right people, dude. Like, yeah. also, if you're still going to H2O show now, like, you're whack. Like, yeah. you are whack, bro. Like, Honestly, I'd want to go now because it's dead. I would like to see it now. And then so that way you could, like, restart with just, like, kind of like the But last OGs. I heard, like, people were tackling cops and shit. I don't co-sign. Like, yeah, nah, I'm all set. Like, I'm cool with, like, getting a little rowdy, bro. But, like, yeah. my little rowdy is, like, doing a burnout. Yeah. You know, and like, I do a burnout. Not like, dude, this, I love this fucking thing, dude. It's tackle that cop. Like, no, like, no. no bro. That's not, no. My, that's not my thing. But H2O, yeah. And it was a feeling that I wish I could feel again. Yeah. Bro. So I remember cruising the strip with you. Oh, my God. 
And then we went to the vape shop, I think. <laughs> God, vape. Yo, listen, that was an error. Listen, vapes and Subarus, Jesus Christ, bro. I did the see, I did it backwards, bro. I got the undercut first. Yeah. And then I got the vape second. I got the Subaru last. Oh my God, bro! Like yeah. that was an error. That was an error. And just I remember getting out my car and then pulling out my vape and then just seeing people look at me like, of course it's you look a, at this. Of course you're in a Subaru. Yeah. It's, you know, it was weird. But but if I were to like, what was the best part of H2O for you though? Cruising the strip. Cruising the strip. Like I'm sorry, man. Like. I don't think I'll ever be able to replicate that feeling again, yeah. man. And it's so sad, but it makes it so special. Yeah. Dude, to this day, as a 28-year-old man yeah. that has, like, a good job and, like, all these cool things, dude, mm-hmm. that is the feeling I am ever chasing, bro, is on the strip with my boys without a worry in the world, feeling like you run shit and, like, it's all love because yeah. like, it's just, Hey, what's good? Like that's the energy. And you just, it's a place where you could just drive your car. Yeah. And everyone around you will either appreciate it or not appreciate it. And mm-hmm. it's like, and you're in a tropical, like tourist city, dude. Yeah, I know. Like there's know. landmarks there that are so, uh, bro. I wish I could go back. That's yeah. the best way I could put it, dude. I wish I could. Um, so now you're at H2O, mm. um, and we talked about the, you know, the highlights of cruising you know, as a car owner, but what's it like as a photographer going down there? Like, did you plan or say, you know what, I got to grab media? Because like, everybody who's a photographer or videographer is going down there to, to get the most, I guess, lit moments and catch up somebody doing a burnout and things like that, or whatever the case may be. What was it like for you as a photographer down there? It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, because then you got you got like people dedicated like Sammy Schwa and uh, Crispy, dude. And mm-hmm. like, I don't know if you've ever been like a full time, like you have a job to do, photographer or videographer. But like, if you've been to H2O and you are that title, there really is no room to enjoy what's in front of you sometimes. Yeah. Like you are on the go for the next best thing, dude. This they Those dudes are always sweating. And every time I've tried... Mm-hmm. I brought down my gear, dude. I got shoot scheduled. Dude, I even filmed a whole H2O and just never got around to it because it was so fun. Yeah. Like, you have to, you really do have to try to choose. Yeah. Like, can you do both? Can you? And if you do, you gotta figure out a balance, bro. Like, yeah. there's so many cool, fun things going on around you all the time. And uh, there's the job. And the, and the job is, delivering that feeling later Mm -hmm. it's a very hard thing to ignore h2o when you're there and focus on the work so um that's my answer it's it's hard and i always ended up just choosing being in the moment which is very good honestly it's good dude it is but it's like you know also seeing your your video featured by stance nation having all those people watching and get that feeling that you wanted to share did that happen like, well, I mean, um, Crispy had his feature. Crispy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. I mean, a lot of the guys, that was kind of like the goal was to get that feature on Stance Nation and a lot of the other big companies. Oh, I got a feature yeah. on Donut Media. Yeah. Not on, on accident. Like, it wasn't planned. How'd you manage that? I didn't. <laughs> he just randomly just woke up, up and you're just yeah, like, hey, yo. I got a bunch of dances with like, Donut Media. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I got, I, got, I got the same thing. My car was on there, but you got trolled. Did it? Yeah, dude, the green Subaru. <laughs> I was like, what is this fancy piece of shit? <laughs> but it's cool, though. It's cool. I don't know how that car, I don't know how that car got on Donut Media, dude. If you yeah. walked up five feet, dude, dude, it didn't have side skirts. No one knew it didn't have side I skirts. Know. I know. I know. <laughs> it never got side skirts. I know. That was crazy. So talking about balance and talking about doing it professionally... I mean, you came back to Mass, but then you decided to pursue this. I remember you went through a chapter in your life where you got the office, and then you try to pursue this as an actual business. What's that like? You know, so if you had to like express to people who's kind of like in that that wedge in life, where they're like, I like what I'm doing, I want to pursue it as a business, but I don't know if I can do it yet. What was that like for you? And what's some tips you could share with some people? So this segment, I'll be transparent, is a very deep segment for me. Mm-hmm. So it dives into mental health, 
it dives into the effects of not treating your health well and stuff like that. So um, it might be a little elongated, but I think that it's important for people who do deal with mental health and do, they're also creative, mm -hmm. which is most creatives do deal with mental health. Yeah. From what I found. So when I got the office, this is when I was also balls deep in clout. Okay. Mm -hmm. I still had the car. I was transitioning from car stuff to music, the mm -hmm. music industry and stuff like that. I started doing videos with like, I'm not saying I directed or filmed these, but like I yeah. was on set with like Joyner, Joyner Lucas. Um, I got to meet Logic and like some other bigger names that, that you may or may not know, but I was on a high horse a little bit and I wasn't a dick about it, but like, yeah. I felt like I was the shit. This is happening for mm -hmm. me because I'm working hard. Now, I got the office, it felt like a really cool, and I was taking jobs to pay, yeah. that just pay. And I started, I didn't, I didn't notice this for a bit, mm -hmm. but when people started being like, dude, how's it feel, man? Like, how's it feel? You're doing it, dude. You got your office, you're doing this full time. Like, dude, you're doing it. I'm so proud of you. Nothing. I felt nothing, bro. I felt whatever yeah and i knew that wasn't right yeah. didn't know why but i knew that wasn't right but i just kept on shooting like mm -hmm. you know what i mean didn't look into it this is also when i was naive so um i took all these jobs and i started hating all the jobs i was doing they're just music i didn't like uh yeah. creative directions i didn't like but it was paying the bills and it was keeping that clout status of like hey i'm doing this <laughs> All right, so, you know, speaking on, you know, coming from H2O and coming back into Massachusetts and things like that, I remember you then leapt forward into taking this photography and cinematography thing into an actual business. I remember you grabbed the office. So mm -hmm. what was that transition like for you? And also, like, if you can give some tips, because I know there's some people in life who's kind of just in this weird wedge in life where they don't know if they can make the jump to pursue this full time and 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 say hey listen like i'm gonna quit my nine to five and really pursue this and make this hard decision so what was that like for you uh i mean i would i would say i would say for me it was kind of like on the on the on the bucket list in terms of like feeling accomplished and like mm -hmm having my own creative space, like at, at my house, like I had, a, I had a great like upbringing, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. like uh, one thing I lacked was privacy mm -hmm. and like a, a area to focus on. So it was really big and important for me to like get a space. And with that, obviously like I had like the car and like the photography thing was booming. And like, and at that point too, I'm also like starting to dive deep into like the music industry. And I started mm -hmm. like working, working with some bigger names, which was like super sick. But uh, I was on a high horse, so like in a way, uh, getting the office was like a piece of clout, and then it was also like necessary. Yeah. And um, you know, like a lot of my tips are gonna be around like mental health because anyone anyone who's creative um, that I've noticed mm -hmm. also has some sort of mental health struggle, whether it's my business or not. Uh, but I think that that's something that is so important especially in nowadays and how saturated the market is and everything like that so um, i'm probably going to dive into that but to start man um i got the office mm -hmm. and it was like 500 bucks a month didn't even have heat uh but uh it was a start so like when i went there it felt like i could associate it with work and it was just good it was a good relationship however my problem was which we'll get into later I didn't know how to turn off. Mm -hmm. You can probably relate by that. You yeah. don't know how to turn off. Like I, ever since I did that, I have been so anti, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> so anti that I, I'm trying to live for a bit. Yeah. I don't want to die at 40. Um, so with, with that man, uh, I got this office and I was moving into the, in, in the music industry and um, I was starting to take jobs to just keep me alive. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I quit my job, I did it full time and yeah. now I'm like, I'm the guy, I'm the guy that made it. Like I'm mm -hmm. doing it, doing my thing full time. 
and I'm having like my family members and like friends and be like, my boy, like you've done it. Mm -hmm. You're the one getting out of the cut. Like you are such an inspiration, man. He's like, you really stuck to it and you got it. And you know, anyone who like worked hard and passionate about what they do, that would be, that'd feel real good hearing that. Mm -hmm. I, it was dead inside for me. And Mm -hmm. I'm a pretty sensitive guy. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sensitive. I felt nothing, bro. And I knew I was like, "Oh, that's weird." Yeah. That's weird. So I put it in my I put it in the back burner because mm-hmm. that's the kind of guy I was. I put my shit in the back, yeah. and I kept my head down and kept working. I kept working. I kept working. I kept working. I took all these jobs, did all these music videos, music I didn't give a shit about, um, creative direction I didn't give a shit about, but it was paying the bills, mm. dude. I took my car out one day. I said, today, it's fall. This is crazy. You're going to be able to know this. You, you're going you, you're gonna to be like, oh, shit. Mm. You know those photos of the car with like the foliage, the orange foliage, the ones that were yeah. tossed around? That day, I had a panic attack. And I thought I knew what a panic attack was when I was younger. I thought I knew it. Yeah, Brother, I did so not know what it can feel like. Um, I went for it. I want I my job. Was, I told myself, I'm going to take a mental health day. I'm going to go take some photos in my car because I deserve it because I like my car mm-hmm. and I want some cool photos, dude. I felt a little weird all day. Yeah. Yep. Felt weird all day. Came back, dude. I had a heart palpitation in my chest. It went into my throat. I started seeing double. I'm driving. I got so scared. I thought I was dying and no one would answer the phone. Um, don't need to go too deep into it, but that happened. And, you know, I got like, went to the ER, bro. I went to like, get everything checked out. Everyone was telling me I was healthy. I was fine. And that was tripping me up even more. Yeah. Cause I'm like, something's not okay. Yeah. But I guess I'm fine. So psychiatrist got on medication, all this crap. Yeah. After doing a lot of self-reflection and like getting on an SSRI to help bring me back to like some sort of baseline where I can process life, dude. I was at a point where I was shooting with Joyner Lucas, going to these car shows, Mm -hmm. being the fucking man to being so scared that my heart's going to give out if I go to the gas station. And like I was, it was a fucking wake up call, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I have never felt so out of control in my life from feeling someone who like I was on top of the world. Like I was the man. Yeah. So it really humbled me, dude, Mm -hmm. really humbled me. And after a lot of self-reflection and talking to people and, you know, on my journey to figuring this out, I realized one thing, man, I was never taught how to manage stress. Mm. That was the big thing, man. Like, so my first real tip to anyone who's out there, uh, like that wants to do it, do it. Yeah. For sure. Just start. Don't matter. Don't give yourself a bar. Stop comparing yourself. Just do it. That's a big thing. Comparing Stop. yourself, man. It's just it's because stupid. you're looking at like oh, like Sam Colder, dude, and dude, like Peter McKinnon. Brother, they buying are, their like their packs. And not to knock those guys because yeah. I respect they have a business and things to go on like that. But like you're looking at people buying t- dude, teals and oranges. Teals and oranges during that period was just crazy. And then taking this slider and making everything like you're crushing the blacks was like the go-to. But like you like, got to fuck up. Yeah. You got to fuck up. Don't get mad because you can't make a Sam Colder photo or a Peter McKinnon photo. Mm-hmm. Peter McKinnon can, can call up Red Bull. Mm-hmm. Like you see the Eclipse yeah, photo he I took? Do. Brother, crazy. that is crazy. You're yeah. comparing yourself to that guy? Bro, you're not there. You got a T5I. Humble yourself. Oh, shit. Okay? 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 But if you look at Peter McKinnon's video, yeah. this is something I'm always going to recommend. This is also a really good tip. It's one, a beautiful little thing. Mm. And uh, it really shows you that when he started, which was 10, 15 years ago, yeah. Instagram wasn't a thing. He was taking photos of blades of grass in the backyard yeah. and thought it was cool. And if you, he shows those photos and mm-hmm. you're like, oof. Yeah. And but dude, like you start somewhere. So it doesn't matter where you start, you're gonna start somewhere and it's always gonna be shittier than your next thing. Mm-hmm. 
So just do it. But if you do it, I'm always going to recommend not starting something until you are aware, self-aware enough to know how to turn off. Yeah. It's, it's so imp- dude, like it's so important to treat your body and mind with the same respect as you do your profession because like like what's what's the point of having all this growth and the sales are high but if your mental health is depleting mm-hmm. or like your health yeah. not alone just your mental health your health yeah cool you got 10 bands from that shoot you also now need medication and all this shit cuz you're not taking care of yourself mm-hmm. like you can't benefit and enjoy the shit mm-hmm. so there's balance and that's one thing if i could tell myself dude don't go into the office today mm-hmm. tell the client no you they can wait cuz you are one person you aren't replaceable so take care of yourself yeah okay well i mean that speaks to it you know and i hear it i hear it because me personally on my end I had to cut down, and as I've told a lot of you guys, you know, and speaking on it several times on social media, how I'm transitioning from events to the podcast space because it's more therapeutic for myself. And it, it, it gave me a chance to re-tap into the thing that was most important to me at the end of the day, which was my family. Yeah. Because dedicating summer after summer after summer after summer, mm-hmm. going to so many shows, taking so many flights, driving so many miles, and missing on soccer games or even just going down the street to the public pool with my kids or going fishing or I bought a boat and it sat there for like two years dude like things like that like I was like no I gotta go back to ground zero and what's important to me and the part that I enjoyed most about the car scene was meeting up with my friends as simple spots as the car wash it didn't have to be the park a lot of 500 people it was cool because seeing you know I was happy with looking at the parking lot with you guys and seeing it just filled and everybody having a good time and a great, you know, good vibes and all that stuff, the whole nine. Cool. I didn't care about the clout. I just want to see people come out and have a good time and seeing kids look at cars. Because I remember myself when I was a young kid going to Bayside Expo Center, seeing cars and being like, oh my God, that's dope. But the sacrifice for that, to me, I was like, it's not worth it. So I have to put it on the back burner. The cool part is though, like this is the part that like you can't ch- we can't change. Yeah. Is that just doing that. You had to do it mm-hmm. to know that it's not worth it. Yeah. And like people like you and me which are we're stubborn people. Oh shit. Yeah. You- <laughs> dog, 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 you can tell that person, "Hey dude, find balance." Mm-hmm. But sometimes, bro, they're going to have they have to hit the wall. Yeah. That's, the, that's just the crazy part. That the, there's a reality to it. So, you know, with the photography and, and that stuff, what was you more keen to? The photography or the cinematography? Keen? Yeah, which one, do you, which one did you like more that you kind of was just like, I kind of like doing this more because I feel more creative when I'm doing it. Cinematography. Yeah? Mainly in post-production, but pre-production is also fun too. Yeah, cinematography for sure. Uh, I, it, it, it's one of those things where I want to grow. Mm-hmm. Photography, like, I want to grow, but, like, I enjoy shooting more than post-production for photography. Mm. But I enjoy post-production more for cinematography than shooting. Okay. So when it comes to being in, like, my safe zone at home mm-hmm. or, like, my editing setup, I enjoy the editing process when it's like when it's when I have all creative control. Yeah. Like I enjoy it the full yeah. time. But like that's usually what I did at H two O to circle mm. back is that I resorted to photography because I could enjoy what was around me and capture moments that was around me yeah. while not being taken away from the present. Okay. So that's why I never ended up doing cinematography down there because I felt like the presence was more important. But mm-hmm. the cinematography for sure, man, it's just it's fun for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, fucking so how much you can cook something without before it starts to look like shit. So for the guys who are just getting into videos then, which would lead me to the next question is, what would you recommend to them as far as like, you know, hey, like, I don't know what gear, I don't know what computer to start off with. Um, what should I focus on more besides trying to hone in my skills? Like, 
Let's start with gear. What would you tell them to start off with? That's budget friendly. Because, I mean, keep in mind, not everybody who's getting into this has a lot of money. But what would you recommend for that average, you know? I would say to definitely set aside a minimum of 500. Yeah. To start. Yeah, because that's what I had to do to start. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is, nowadays, there's so many cooler options. Like, Mm -hmm. there's the Sony Alpha series, dude. Go on Facebook Marketplace and go get an A6000. Yeah. Dude, like that picture looks so sick, so mm-hmm. good, and could pass as probably a B cam mm-hmm. for like pretty lar- like larger production. Like, I got an A six thousand for forty five, no, four hundred fifty bucks. That was like my stream camera, but mm-hmm. like, I threw some just like budget glass on there, dude, and it looked great. Especially with a lot of things like low lights, mm-hmm. our low light photography and videography yeah. is like pretty. Uh, a standard now. Yeah. Uh, I would probably recommend, dude, like, a some like a some sort of mirrorless camera. It doesn't have to be Sony, mm-hmm. but I'm just a Sony guy. I would recommend that, dude. Yeah. A solid tripod, dude. And um, what about for editing? Would you say stick to their phone, or would you say because you know phones are getting better now? <laughs> this might so, be bias. Yeah. This answer might be bias. I don't like phone editing. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't, man. It doesn't, nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. You can probably bank. Dude, I know that DaVinci has a pretty good iPad app. I use it. It's not bad. DaVinci it's, kills it's it. It's like the fact that you can do, use your LUTs and everything like that. Like, even though Sean seen it and he was just like, what? I feel like it's the filler of the on the go and I'm going to pick up this project. Like, I know I'm going home. Black Magic but, is the brand in the creative space yeah. that we all want. It's like, it's like, it's black magic is like the brand Apple that mm. listens to the consumer. Yeah. And doesn't yeah. feed you BS. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want, oh, you want just the free version to run faster? Well, let's see what we can make happen. Mm-hmm. V19 comes out, dude, and yeah. hey, now we can use your GPU. Okay. See, like, like, yeah. you're like, because I, 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 I love DaVinci. Mm-hmm. I still main Premiere. I don't know why. Because I use DaVinci, but mm-hmm. I think it's just because of the captioning tool with, with micro content. Okay. But I know that DaVinci has it now, and I know it's better. But um, for editing, dude, uh, I'm always a believer in having some sort of actual computer first before relying on a mobile de- device. Mobile device. Much. Okay. And I only say that because if you're taking it seriously, like that's going to be like there's a point where your mobile device does not equate. To mm-hmm. your editing setup, like as soon as you start recording 4K 10 bit video, dude, like your iPad may struggle. Yeah, like that's those are larger files. Like you might start to need a computer. So I mean, I would recommend, dude, if you're not if you're not tech savvy, I'm gonna recommend uh, like a base MacBook Pro, but that's also large in yeah. price. So I would. Well, you can get one used on Facebook Market. You know what's now. killer? Pretty, yeah, ThinkPad. A Leno- you know the yeah. Lenovo ThinkPads. Mm-hmm. The things that like work gives you. Yeah. Dude, I recommend checking their website. They have some pretty good options <laughs> on there. But it's the dead truth, bro. It really some is. people just off the apple, you know, fruit punch, but still like, you know, you can get some stuff with some good hardware in it, honestly. Like I just saw the a video, interesting video online where it was just like the silent killer. And it was an Asus computer that sells for 1800 bucks. And what you get inside of it as far as hardware for 1800 bucks blows the top spec macbook m3 that's out there i know by far dude i saw the specs and like the performance stuff and not to geek out too much but it was it was crazy how not close that and the and then the spec'd out macbook i think when they priced out everything to that even came close to competing Mm. was like nine thousand dollars bro yeah and i was just like but you'll what? have you'll have hardcore people that say, nah, I just like the OS, bro. Yeah. Or like, yo, I like the text from my iPhone. Yeah. I mean, and I'm like, like dope, but like there's like a balance. Like yeah. 1800 no. versus nine bands. And then there's spoiler alert, uh, you're probably gonna be able to text from your Windows computer from your iPhone now. Like I soon. I from, yeah. So that's so that is so exciting for me because now I don't feel like I need a MacBook. A MacBook. Because yeah. like I I do like the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. But for like editing, bro, like they're just, they're just not. And let's not lie, man. Like, freaking, we've all caught the spinning wheel editing some shit, yo, and you're just like, all right, time to reboot. 
Yes. You know. It's also $2,800 starting, and like that's yeah. not a budget friendly. So to like loop back though, yeah. I wouldn't recommend the MacBook Pro. Um, Unless you find one used for a good deal on Marketplace. Right, but like, yeah. I, I, would, I would recommend, dude, is finding some dude that is selling some built PC from like probably six years ago. Mm -hmm. If it's like just low ball them, take it for 600 bucks mm -hmm. and then ask your computer nerd friend because you all got one and ask them to make it fast. And it's like, that's layman's term mm -hmm. because that's what I did. Yeah. I have a second computer that I spent like $600 on. I replaced one thing, dude. The thing is super outdated, but I can edit full videos on there. Mm -hmm. No problem. I spent 600 bucks on it. It's like a little portable tower thing and it's... It's sick. You can get by. Um, you can definitely make it happen. You could probably be all in filming, editing, mm -hmm. sub, sub 15, 1600 bucks if you're smart. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. okay. And that's, that's a very good, that's a, that's a very friendly mm -hmm. price. Okay. To pay, I'd, I'd say 1500 bucks yeah. to start to like, you go home, you can video and come home and edit yeah. and like ha have it somewhat be reliable. Okay. That's not bad. All right. So to keep the balance going, you know, going from, you know, camera talk and cinematography talk to now going back to the car scene. Um, let's talk. Oh, I'm fat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> let's talk events. Let's talk clout. Let's talk time period from 2016 to friggin' 2015 to COVID. Um, the hype years of the car scene and everything is stanced and slammed and people getting tickets at H2O. How dangerous was clout back then? Yo, clout was just... How addicting was clout? Yeah, clout, for me, I wasn't addicted, but bro, do I know people that were addicted to clout to the yeah. point, I'm not gonna name anybody <laughs> but but i will say dog like yeah. people were gatekeeping like what we, like they were like y'all don't know what's coming they like they'll take a picture of the wheels but like 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 like, like block like censor the wheel oh like people God. are on the edge of the seat like bro i wonder if they got the fucking like like yeah it was I'm bad like, i'm like it was bad ig back then was like it was wild like come the on dog real. i was like, just like and now that i'm older and i'm looking at it i'm like bro Bro, they censor it like like it's a drug bust, bro. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Like I get it, dude. If you got like a following mm -hmm. and like people like like look up to you, like you got like a dream GTR, like an R34, yeah. like Nismo, and like people are hyped to but see I what mean, you're doing with it. We bro. got to the point where people literally were shaving the the wheel specs off their tires. Yeah. Yeah. I shaved my wheels, but I've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm not dude, my boy, me and my boy Ryan, dude, I couldn't get fitment right for H12, bro. I bought a potato with potato skinner, dude, and I did the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever fucking done, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm so I'm, I'm like, dude, this is no way, dude. <laughs> it was everything, bro. It was everything. Like, people were just doing whatever just to blow up online. And... It was like, what was the next level? And that's what kind of brought the car scene to where it is now, where we're seeing kids get clapped by Way chargers and G37s in a circle. Way too ego driven. And, and, and it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. At least local. Um, and then another thing that was happening then that I want to speak on too was <laughs> an interesting chapter in your life because, and I want to intro this right. I remember being at the Mass Vapors parking lot early for once. I know everybody's gonna, <laughs> me and Carmen showing up early, but I was there and then you approached me and you said, hey, I got a friend I want you to meet. He's gonna start a car group. And I wanna introduce Yo, you. Are you talking about who I think you're talking about? <laughs> I forgot that. And I was like, really, who's this person? And then he was just like, Oh, this is Jordan. Do we drop? Yeah, we drop names. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, I don't got ties to this fucking dude anymore. And it was Jordan. And I was like, Jordan. I was like, all right, cool. I'm like, we're not going to name a like, last name, but it's. Uh, for, and then, it's no, 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 I'm not going to do the last name, you know. But uh, then I'm like, oh, it's cool. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, you know, I got this car and I'm trying to start a group and things like that. And I'm like, what's the group called? And he goes, 
forever slammed. Yo, this makes my this makes me this dude this is uncomfortable, <laughs> man. I so, keep forgetting I was like a direct correlation to that shit. <laughs> so, I remember Forever Slam coming in and then just literally just they had a beach event and there was all types of Ferrari and then this stance car and that stance car and it was a giant group and then everybody was like, "Oh, we got the banners and models and can I want to I want to for the people who are ignorant here." Yeah. Okay, break it down. Take me back. No, what no, is... I'm going to let you take the wheel, but I want to add a small, important detail okay. that will make people go, what? Jordan, at the time, was 16. He couldn't drive. How the hell did he end up in Lynn? I'm going to let you keep going after that. I want, I want, I want them to think about... <laughs> <laughs> I want them to fucking think, dude. From the outside looking in, and it was just a, a giant magnet, and it was attracting everything around it. It was like I was seeing people just standing on. It was the introduction of standing on hoods and prayer hands and all that shit. Like, mm -hmm. and the only thing like that was directly competing was like you had clean culture as far as like a cult where it was just like people mm -hmm. were slapping banners on and mm -hmm. you've seen it everywhere at car shows and things like that but forever slam they fucking had like a school bus yeah and they showed up and like it was just nuts but then you seen all you knew was it was just jordan who was running it but you guys were working for a 16 year old uh me yes I got paid, so it was uh, it was cool with me. But, yeah, yeah. But um, to to put shed some light on everything, uh, I was work. I was a part of the, the 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 face of Forever Slammed. Yeah. I definitely didn't know the majority of shit on the back end, mm -hmm. brother. I didn't know where the bus came from. I didn't know where these cars came from. I didn't know where the funding came from. Yeah. Home Dog said we're renting out a stadium. I'm like, you're 16. How can you do that? I mean, I know why now. Yeah. But, like, yes, like, if you were to put, like, if you, like, Forever Slammed, Forever Slammed, its motive was definitely, like, if you were to, it's supreme. Yeah. It was clout mm -hmm. to the nine to where exactly clean culture, like, you were, like, trying that to. That shit was, like, the fire festival, but for cars. Like, it was cool, but then you were, like, what are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I remember, dude, uh, great memories of that school bus, dude. I pulled yeah. up to Cody Weiss's uh, um, stance party, which was some of the greatest moments, too. Yeah. Shout out to Cody. Yeah. You know. Hope he's doing well, but. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, dude, I don't know where to begin with this fucking thing. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you, you navigate me. I have the answers. It was just, it was just weird. And then I just remember as soon as it came and as soon as it was hype, it would just disappeared and then everybody was pissed yeah so there was a point. like yo i haven't seen anybody pissed off like online when it came to car events like you get a couple people who just like trophies no. and i didn't win and da, 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 da. but these were people that were just like he was a it be he forever slam became a virus yeah 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 dude uh i remember one day going on in my facebook and seeing people of my friends mm-hmm completely bashing Forever Slammed and, like, Jordan. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm, like, reaching out to Jordan, dude. I'm like, what's good? And he's like, I don't know. And um, I'm like, okay. And then days and weeks later, those posts are multiplying, bro. Yeah. And I'm, these posts are about people putting deposits in for, like, sets of wheels. And... Like thousands of dollars, like forged rotiform shit, like mm -hmm. four to six bands. And they never get their wheels and they never got a refund for the deposits. That was one thing. Two, uh, for collect, you would, you'll also prepay for VIP for the shows. Mm -hmm. And for the shows that were canceled, postponed, that never happened, these people never got their refunds. So my feed, turned into like a digital what's the word 
uh, rave, not rave. Um, no, uh, it was like a purge, bro. But online, this shit was nuts. What's it, it was... called? What's it called? Um, a, that's like a strike where like you're in this a riot, a digital yeah. riot. Yeah, dude, I was blowing this kid up. I'm like, what is going on? And he is not answering me. He is gone, like disappeared, ghost? gone, bro. I don't even remember saying bye. To him, dude, and like that's how that's how our relationship ended. I have he just yeah, poof, disappeared, and I'm like, and I know a couple people today that are still kind of in touch with him. I don't really talk to them, but gone, dude, and like, there's nothing I could do. Mm-hmm. I could just voice that I had no idea about this, and yeah. like, um, I don't co-sign. I immediately withdrew from that brand. I was like, yeah, bro. So I mean, got, me and you spoke, and then it was just like a weird space. Bro, it, I, it, I was like sickened to know that like my shit was attached to that. Like I never got any hate. Yeah. Personally, but it's probably. But I feel like people knew you before yeah. Forever Slam, so that's what kind of like saved. It wasn't like you blew up or you like grew within the brand. You were already your own person, you were doing your own thing before last, then. Last I heard of this dude, dude, I, I remember he like he like literally like removed himself and like moved to a different state and like owned a pyramid scheme shit. Very in in line for what that is, but That's wild. But it was insane, dude. It was insane. I couldn't believe it. Like people I knew were being ripped off and I was like I mm-hmm. I was like, dude, I wish I had access to the funding cuz I would Fucking give it right back, but yeah, that was a time period. No, just I'll tell you what, like, I, you not know, say it was good that it happened then, but I could only imagine if that shit happened. I have a theory now. What? So I learned later, and I don't know if this is confirmed or not. So like, don't like take me out of context here. But I was told that the school bus, these Ferraris, the stadiums, they were all like personal loans from like his parents, because like they were like I think he was well off. Um. So. I don't know what happened. My theory is that he could never pay back his parents. Mm. And he stole. Or some shit. I don't know. This is yeah. just a theory that came up with my head. Mm-hmm. Hadn't heard from the guy. Didn't exactly leave me on a friendly foot, so I don't mind saying it. No shit. <laughs> and I'm not trying to like talk smack. No, either. no, no, no. It's just, we're just talking about That's how the, it looks. the chapters and the phases that you went through in your life. So this isn't about him or his company and things like that. It's just... This is honestly a chapter that you went through in your life. So Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, well, I don't even know what year that was, dude. 2017? That was about 2017 because everybody was ripping for about a good solid six months. And then, boom, COVID hit. Oh, and yeah. COVID allowed us to forget about that. And it kind of, like, wiped his yeah. slate clean. Because as we're talking about this, I feel like the OGs in the car scene is going to be like, oh, fuck, whatever happened to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It you really did just like, like blow over. It, it just, COVID-19 kind of just wiped the slate clean where it kind of really saved his ass because his event, his major event, remember, was towards the end of the year coming into fall. Like where Was he it re- called the big one? No. No, 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 that was us. Um, it was, um, it wasn't slammed at the beach. It was, no. It was slammed another the, event that he did. Slammed. It was like in fall. I mean, they were slammed at the fair. Yeah. But that was that happened. Yeah, I know. That was like the last event that I think that they yeah, did. I remember yeah. work I remember working yeah. I remember working that shit, dude, for like 12, 14 hours, dude, and I had yeah. to beg him for more than two hundred dollars of Jeez. of the like the thousands of the he's yeah. holding. I'm like, come on, dog. <laughs> so you know, that happened. And we're gonna keep the ball rolling and things like that. So now we're talking COVID. Yeah, twenty twenty. And and and, and how did COVID hit you with, you know, being, because a photographer and then even as that as a profession, unless you're really locked in with an agency and things like that, like that is literally one of the hardest jobs, not to disrespect anybody who's like in the medical field or anything like that, but being a photographer or a videographer during COVID and you have to be six feet and that's if anybody even wants to be around you. Mm-hmm. Like, how did you navigate through that? Like, weddings are getting canceled. Private, pro, uh, like, professional events are getting canceled. You know, nobody knew what was going. We were on lockdown. I mean, yeah, I remember. it was dope for me because, honestly, I feel like that allowed me to grow in the street photography uh, space, which I don't even know why I never really shared those photos. But, like, I felt like some of my best work was, like, the streets were just empty. 
and it was weird, but... Remember that photo we took on the Tobin Bridge? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Never doing that again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Still a cool photo. Yeah. But um, how did you navigate through COVID? Uh, I think it was way easier for me than most. And, yeah. I, and, I, yeah, and I say that because right around that same time is where I briefly mentioned before yeah. uh, I had a, that panic attack. and then from oh, So that, you helped with the shutdown then? You get in the space. Yeah, because... Like I was quite literally me running a business yeah. and paying back like credit companies like A firm and shit. Yeah. Was so not on the front forefront of my mind anymore. I was thought I was dying for yeah. months, dude. And that's the crazy thing about anxiety is that like you can find every like mm. everything can make sense and you can still feel that way. Yeah. Um so dude, during COVID, the only thing that COVID no actually, yes. That happened there, and then it eased into COVID. Mm-hmm. So at that point in my time, all I gave a shit about was finding some sort of feeling that wasn't fear yeah. as a baseline. Okay. So um, at that point, dude, like it was really just car stuff. I just mm-hmm. kind of focused on car stuff. That's when it went to Tuna Revolution. That was when the Donut Media thing happened. I was mm-hmm. just kind of like just trying to enjoy what was in front of me the best I could. And it was hard for me. But then great timing with this anxiety issue that happened in my life, COVID happened. Mm -hmm. You mix those two, you get something called hypochondria, dude. So that thing created, I I became like a hypochondriac for a long time. I almost still am today, but I'm fine now. But like, I, that was a thing. Mm -hmm. Because everyone, not everyone was a hypochondriac in COVID for like the first like two months. Yeah. Because everyone, six feet. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that was it, dude. So, in terms of, like, professionally, dude, it didn't affect me much because I wasn't booked much. Mm-hmm. So, there's that answer. But uh, navigating it through, dude, I just tried my absolute best. I remember being a little fucking bullshitter mm-hmm. at one time, and I was working at Verizon, dude, in Beverly. Yeah. And uh, I started, I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell my boss I'm not feeling good during this pandemic. I don't know how much I should say, mm. <laughs> but long story short, uh, he asked me if I didn't want to come back, and I said I do, but I'm just nervous. Yeah. He put me on a oh. furlough. Yeah, furlough. Furlough, and I just never went back. Mm-hmm. He never asked me to come back. Mm. Uh, he actually just texted me the other day, asking me if I wanted to work for him. It's funny enough. That's but, crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. But uh, that's kind of how that went, dude. So like now. With this anxiety thing, dude, and being forced inside, Mm -hmm. that was a hard thing to navigate. Yeah. Was like you didn't have anything to report to in the day. Mm -hmm. You kind of were forced to be alone in your own thoughts and and, like your own thoughts and like finding your balance within the house that you live in. Yeah. Or whatever you live in. So that was tough. So I I I really tried to focus on my physical health. Mm -hmm. I really tried to focus on my mental and physical health a lot during COVID. Mm -hmm. Took risks. Went down to Connecticut, worked for a company called Carbon Kings with my boy, mm-hmm. Angelo. Um, didn't work out. All love to them. And, uh, dude, a lot, of co- a lot of COVID Yeah, was figuring shit out. And it was yeah. a really good excuse for a lot of people. You were mm-hmm. getting stimmies, dude. Mm-hmm. Fucking, you know, fucking yeah. ex- ex- maybe getting your first apartment. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Yeah. I went to Connecticut. I moved out. Um, and then after people started realizing, like, maybe COVID, like, is something to be sketched out about, dude, mm-hmm. but it's, you don't, we don't need to shut down. Yeah. That's when, like, I left Connecticut. Okay. But, yeah, I feel like Connecticut's a whole nother chapter. Yeah, another <laughs> chapter. So, you know, when was the bounce back for you when you was just, like... Because I started seeing you getting active and putting some really great content out, you know, working with other uh, musicians. Mm. You know, how did you get back into picking up the camera and started working with musicians? Uh, I forced myself to. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shout out my friend Jared Hughes, man. Um, So during this time, again, like it's bad mental health time, like a lot of things felt alien to me, enjoying my car. Mm-hmm. enjoying my straight pipe 
a lot of things were felt alien. It was so fucking weird, bro. Yeah. Like I was someone who wanted to burn out and then I was nervous to do a burnout. Like I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> why? Yeah. So a lot of things were alien. So I was like, you know what, dude? Like for me, like I'm just going to do shit that I would do. Yeah. So I, every weekend during COVID, mm -hmm. dude, even in the winters, 10 degrees out, bro. I would, me and my friend Jared, we would go get Cafe Nero yeah. in Beverly and we'd get a warm drink and we'd go walk Boston for like three hours and mm. just take photos, bro. Some of the, my favorite photos I've ever taken, bro. Yeah. And that's when I fucking learned that my best work is when I'm around people I really like to be around. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like work. That's when my best work comes out. Yeah. But that's what, I, that's what I did. I forced myself as a routine and then that kind of like jump started my drive to yeah. like yeah this is this is my purpose mm -hmm. like i have to get back into doing this and then i started then i started focusing on weddings okay. and like more corporate stuff like a different approach to mm -hmm. making this a business you know with a mm -hmm. more balance something i didn't mind doing mm -hmm. rather than hated yeah and that paid maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how I picked it back up, dude. I kind of just made myself. Yeah. And if it stuck, it stuck. Yeah. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. So what are some of the, you know, what's it like working with, like, people like, you know, Joyner Lucas and other, you know, artists and being in that space? Like, are you more subject, do you feel like you can still be creative or you kind of like, you have to go off of what they envision? and their expectations that's tough so when it comes to like bigger productions like that like i was there to help like okay. the people like i was not the production like the people up in manchester new hampshire like handled a lot of it but i was there like help build sets and like uh bring props and like create a like bring a creative direction mm -hmm. um so both like okay. there's a part where that person of that caliber does pick you for the product that you create mm -hmm. and then they want to come with you with their own vision so um i worked on the music video i love by joiner lucas is a good example mm -hmm. and uh we come up we came up with the idea of having a pink car mm -hmm. um and with pink balloons and for for like a scene and it like was really cool and like i'm obviously the car guy and like i was yeah. able to pull that off and it was really cool um, so like when it comes to that stuff, it really is like a mix. Um, but it really is different artist to artist, man. Like that's really, that's the cool part mm -hmm. is it really depends on the artist. Yeah. Like there are some artists that hire you because they love what you do and mm -hmm. they want you, they want to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that want to breathe over your shoulder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. it's finding the balance between that. And that's when I started connecting with like one of my best friends today and I'm now his manager and stuff mm -hmm. like that, Justin Clancy. And How's that I've, working out? It's a grind, man. Yeah? It's a grind, but yeah. it's working out good, dude. We're headlining. Not, dude, what the fuck? I'm not headlining. We're playing Boston Calling. That's what's up. Which is cool. We're opening. Which a lot of big names is going to be there, so it's a dope opportunity We're for you guys. Pretty much That's opening dope. for Ed Sheeran, which is pretty wild. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. So, like, things are working very slow. Wait, Ginger Twins. Ginger I want a picture of them. <laughs> I want a picture of them. I was told they get a picture with Ed. <laughs> oh my God. But a lot of cool, a lot of cool things led to. I reckon that. <laughs> oh my God, yo. I got to see that picture. That's going to be epic. I got to. <laughs> I got to. I want to be there to take I'll picture. have us both in a vape or oh some shit. Oh my God. Getting in a Subaru together. Yeah. That'd be a photo. Yeah. That'd Ed be Sheeran in a fucking Subaru. Subaru the <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. So, if we fast forward and we're catching up, man. So, where is Eric at now in life? Dude, um, again, kind of just following what the feeling is inside of me rather than holding myself to a standard of bars or, mm -hmm. or clout or what I should be doing and where I should be at by what age. I've really just been focused on getting my shit right, bro. Like, let's look at the reality. Like, the economy's tough. Yeah. Everything is expensive. Like, there is a point, bro, where you do have to fucking, like, you have to get your shit right. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, man, my, the past couple years, dude, I've been finding my, I found myself with a girl. Um, 
I found myself a secure job. And like, I, I, like, I hate to say that because like, you don't want to, you don't want to say that, but like, dude, in order to get the new equipment, in yeah. order to like ha- be mentally not stressed enough about money, yeah. if, like if you're stressed, dude, there's no way you're going to be create well. Mm-hmm. Like I need to get my money right and get my shit right. So honestly, dude, it's really just been enjoying getting my shit right. And mm-hmm. um, in the meantime, I've been doing weddings. Like that's okay. kind of been it. And I love doing weddings, mm-hmm. but uh, until like- What I'm, is it dope? It just a lot of pressure, which I had to learn to get over because it's like, I was afraid of missing moments. My best advice for anyone who wants to get into weddings, dude, everyone's getting married, say I'll do it for free. Get three in, get some good photos, find some wedding company, some wedding group that hires you and hires you for four, 400 bucks for like four hours of your time, second shoot, you kind of get the gist, mm-hmm. and then book solo. Mm-hmm. Because half, like you just said, like it is intimidating. Yeah. Like you are their bridezillas. They exist. Mm-hmm. You need to not only be the photographer, but like suck their dick. <laughs> Dude, you have to make sure that everything is okay and in line and totally operating yeah. with like fine mm-hmm. or else they're going to lose it. Yeah. And that happens post-production too. Mm-hmm. So like it is a lot, but yeah. like I didn't, I was tripping about it until I worked with it until like I just done like X, like, like five. Mm-hmm. But dude, like um, finding that balance, getting my money right, dude, getting a reliable car, dude, getting my stressors in line has been the adult correct decision, dude. And um, I'm still in the process of getting new gear, dude. But uh, there's some cool, there's some cool shit lined up and I'm just, I'm just releasing cool shit when it fits Mm -hmm. and uh, creating on the side and keeping the passion alive, man. Yeah. If you're good at what you do and you stay with it, dude, mm-hmm. something's gonna happen. It you're the you're the you're you're making yourself trip if you're putting a timeline on it. Yeah. All right. So as we come to a wrap, and you know, I appreciate you taking your time and coming up here and hanging out, bro. Yeah, and for sure. you know, it's been a long time and it's dope catching up. Dope catching up. Like sure. I said, it's it's great when you have guests up here, but when you have a guest up here that are your actual friends, definitely dope. Um but in every podcast, I usually wrap it up with two questions. The first being, um, for you, and I'll let you answer this in two parts, or you can answer mm-hmm. in a single part if they both were the same year. Mm-hmm. What was the best year for you? Year? In, yeah, best year for you in the car scene or as a photographer slash cinematographer? <laughs> Definitely the year I had my Subi right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Finally getting the feeling of pe- like me inspiring others, seeing little kids excited, seeing other people excited. Like, like I'm just some dude with mm-hmm. a toaster that likes audio, man. Mm-hmm. Like I was that guy. Like I was that guy for those people. And that was a feeling. Not only that, dude, finally feeling so excited to like travel shows and like see where I stand next mm-hmm. to other people. And then, tra- dude, H2O, man, the strip. Riding that car in the strip, mm-hmm. dude. It was easily the best year for me. Photography wise, probably has to be that year too. Yeah. Like, has to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's not really a year that stands out much, but like, I know that that year I loved. I loved that whole year. Which is crazy. So 2016, 20. I'm going to start making a counter, dude, because literally everybody. No, I wasn't that. I think it was 2018. 2018? I think it was 2018, but Mm -hmm. like, my favorite years though, like, for me, yeah. that was it because of my car mainly. Yeah. But outside of that, like H2O and shows and mm-hmm. vibes and like people, mm-hmm. 2016, 2017. Everybody. Everybody. It was. It Summer was 16 was a vibe, bro, that nobody will ever understand, it bro. Was rowdy. You lived it. Yeah. it was rowdy. It was fun. It was friendly. You had the occasional shithead, but it was just the occasional yeah. shithead. That's gonna happen. Everything. Mm-hmm. There's no tackling cops. There's no. There's. There's no. People like, are gonna start that thinking that I'm paying y'all to say forget twenty. Yo, know, almost every guest, bro. In the eighteen episodes that I've done, so, I'm not. Nineteen episodes I've done so far. I'm not. Yeah, it's crazy. No, it's I, crazy. I, bl- I blame. I blame Supreme and streetwear. <laughs> People getting two episodes of clout, dude. Yeah. They'll go. They're going mad. They're doing whatever they can to get on someone's reel. Supreme really put in perspective for me what people are willing to do just to say that they're in or have something. Like, 
I, like I've spent so much money Replace on Jordans, them. and I never even expect like thought of oh I'm just paying all this money for a little like Jumpman logo. No, but at the end of the day, Supreme was just you could have dude. It could have been a Gildan with a fucking Supreme logo on Ooh, it, bro. Supreme is to clean culture banner, is to forever slam banner, is yeah. to rockin' Rota forms mm-hmm. or, or BBS, BBSs. Yeah. Like, Bro, half y'all, half y'all don't give a fuck. You just want, you want that. Oh, you're, you're a part of that. You're, yeah. You're pretty dope. Yeah. You're pretty dope. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Some people do a lot for a fire emoji. <laughs> but, um, so now the second question, not to get super morbid disclaimer, like I tell everybody, but you know, to your peers, to your friends, to your family, to your followers, and, you know, new people that, might have never seen you before, but watched the podcast and, you know, taking this as an introduction to mm. who you are. What do you want to be known and remembered for most? Like, what matters most to you? I want to be known for the underdog. Yeah? Yep. Yep. I, I, a lot of my life I've been misunderstood mm-hmm. and I always figured out that I was capable, more than capable later. Um, so I want to be the guy that um, helps these new kids and puts on is a voice mm-hmm. for people who say I'll sleep when I'm dead. Like, nah, no. get your shit right, do it. Don't compare yourself. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to fail. Get as long. The most important thing is getting up. Mm-hmm. I want to be that guy that gives you that reality to uh, the grind, because the grind is not just not sleeping mm-hmm. and not eating. It's grinding, but also taking care of yourself, seeing your family, seeing your grandma, seeing your friends. It, it is all that. Yeah. So I want to be that voice that, hey, what you're struggling with is normal. Mm-hmm. You don't need to sacrifice time from your family. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Well, I thank you as always, my guy, for coming up. For real. Appreciate it. And until the next time, you guys know the vibes. And make sure you go follow my guy, for real. Is there any shout-outs? Or where can they find you at online? Ah, uh, dude, I don't even have Instagram on my phone right now. But, uh, <laughs> dude, um, yeah, ready, set, toast on Instagram. I kind of just post when I can. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of stuff about Justin. But um, you can find me there. All right, cool. Yeah. So until the next time, you guys know the vibes. And thank you guys for supporting the channel, DMing me. Um, showing me love in the whole nine. We got a lot of stuff coming. I got merch coming. Um, and shout out to Fusion 5 Motorsports for powering everything that you guys have been seeing so far. Um, but yeah, stay up, stay blessed. You know the vibes. Peace. Uh-huh. <laughs>